Uh, in many ways, St. John Presbytery is struggling um, to know what that means. All our preconceived ideas of what churches are uh, failing, and there appear to be few, if any, ideas to take at their place. We have put a team in place to look at visioning and how we vision, not only in our congregations, but including them, but also in our presbytery, to help us face the times like this. For St. John Presbytery, this is a time of struggle, of fear, of sorrow, and of grief. Even where our congregations are thriving, um, there are questions about the future and what that future might look like. Still, we're called to celebrate God's presence in spite of the grief and sorrow as we close three congregations, one of them in front of you, um, and news that others are approaching that time as well, um, and where palliative measures will be needed. At the closing of CQS, there was laughter as well as tears, a sense of accomplishment in the ending, and the spirit moved through the people who were gathered. At Wellsford, there was a house full of people, not just from the church community, but from the community that surrounded it. And they celebrated what Wellsford had been for them over the years of its presence in that community, over 100. <coughs> This Sunday, we will close St. Giles. Um, again, we'll celebrate with people who are called to a different place, where all the members of St. Giles have found another place to worship. To live with respect and creation, um, we're attempting to open and maintain con uh, conversations in the church about fracking and our water supply, about pipelines and employment. Through the Church in Action Committee, we're talking about ways to engage this conversation while at the same time respecting the divergent opinions that are present within the body of Christ. To love and to serve others in our living and in our dying. For the congregations that are closing, there is a great sense of wanting to continue to administer after their gathering together has ended. There's a sense somehow that there must be some kind of legacy that will last longer than the buildings. For the churches who find themselves in better situations, their ministry continues. Weaving together a web of support for people in the community and outside our community. We have a clothing depot supported by St. John Presbytery, which finds its shelves empty a lot of the time, not because of our donations, but because there's such a need. They're serving over 4,800 people since September, providing clothing, <coughs> toys, and small household items. We support food banks. We have a craft dinner program at the Baptist Church in West Kansas that is supported by the area churches, as well as a new one that has begun at St. David's and Rosse. Once a week, high school kids come from school to St. David's <coughs> and have a craft dinner lunch. And um, they have, they are feeding over 200 kids once a week. We make warm blankets for people in the north. We have youth programs that are ongoing, active Sunday schools, any number of vacation Bible schools throughout the summer. We make warm blankets for the children in St. John's South End. The churches of the Presbytery are gathered together to work on Christmas exchange programs and to do literacy work. They support the Seafarers mission and, of course, mission and service. This is the prayer garden that was opened on Kingston Peninsula this summer, past summer not just for the people of the congregation of the Two Rivers Pastoral Church, but for everyone in the community. A 
fall retreat was held for the youth, Youth Following Christ, was attended by youth from four different congregations, 25 of whom were new and had not attended a youth retreat before. So we're definitely reaching someone. They had a great time together. To seek justice and resist evil. In our interactions with each other and with our interactions with others outside our circle, it's a continual struggle to maintain a justice center when there is so much debate about what justice is. Within St. John Presbytery, we're faced with so much grief, it is easy to fall into despair. So we work to establish a sense of community in a desperate and often discouraged group. To proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, we do this through our worship together. Not only at church closings, but also at the covenanting of new ministry personnel who are coming into our presbytery, bringing us new blood, new ideas, and a great deal of energy. We worship at each of the meetings of presbytery, and we pray to God as a community. We sing with abandon, and have danced a conga line before getting down to business. <laughs> <laughs> We're attempting to live the abundant life that Jesus modeled and calls us to live too. Our judge and our hope. We hope because it's all we can do. Will Jesus judge us? Very likely. Will we hope even if we are judged wanting? Of course. Because without hope, what is the point? We have no idea what God is calling us to. We're struggling to build a community that can count on each other, but it is a difficult thing to do when you are immersed in conflict and grief. But we trust that God is with us, and we try, albeit only with great effort, to hold to God's promise that we are not alone. 